Hello everyone, this is Ajit here. This session is in continuation of my earlier session where I talked about earned value management, its basic matrices, an example and a graph to explain that. In this session, I'll be talking about some of the forecasting methods for earned value management. I'll take the same example and the graph for that which I used in my previous session. Those who haven't watched my previous session, here's a quick recap of the example. This is a road work project which is planned to complete 20 km of the stretch within 6 weeks of time with a budget of $12,000. So we have a schedule baseline, scope baseline and the cost baseline available for the project. At the end of 3 weeks, project realizes that it has completed only 8 km of the road with actual money spent of $8,000. So based on the data available, we calculate the plan value which comes out to be $6,000, earned value comes out to be $4,800. With these three variables available, we calculate the earned value management matrices like schedule variance, cost variance, SPI and the CPI. For this example, the schedule variance comes out to be in negative value which shows that the project is behind the schedule. Had this schedule variance been a positive value, that would have mean that the project is ahead of the schedule. Zero would have mean that the project is neck on neck for the on the schedule front. Cost variance for this project is again negative, which shows that the cost is overshot or the cost is over the budget. Had this value been positive, that would have mean that the project is under the budget. Zero would have mean that the project is neck on neck on the cost performance front. SPI and CPI are other way of representing the same uh, matrices which is where the value is measured against the 1. For this example, the SPI is uh, coming out to be 0 0.8 which is less than 1 and that represents that the project is behind the schedule. Had it been greater than 1, that would have represented that the project would have been ahead of the schedule and 0 that it is neck and neck. Similarly, CPI is coming out to be 0 0.6 which is less than 1 that shows that the cost has overshot or cost is over the budget. Had it been greater than 1 that would have shown that the project is well under the budget and 0 would have mean that the cost performance is neck on neck for this project. Now we can assume different scenarios with the same example. In one scenario, had the project completed 11 km of the road after 3 weeks the earned value in that case would have been $6,600 which is more than the planned value but less than the actual meaning the schedule variance would have been positive showing that the project is ahead of the schedule and similarly SPI would have been greater than 1 cost variance still would have been in negative value because 8000 is more than the 6600 and CPI in that case would have been again less than one only. Now in another scenario had the project completed 14 km of the road after 3 weeks in that case the EV would have been $8400. That would have represented that both schedule variance and the cost variance would have been in positive values showing that project is performing well on the schedule as well as the cost front and similarly the CPI and the SPI would have been greater than 1. Now we will stick to our original example to discuss the forecasting methods. This is the graph which represents this example. Here uh, at the end of the 3 week the earned value of the project is 4800 which we calculated here. The plan value is $6000 which we calculated here and the actual cost is $8000 which we mentioned here. Now since the cost is overshot, it is unlikely that the project will be able to achieve the BAC. In that case, there will be a new cost at the completion which is termed as estimated at completion. The difference between EAC and AC is termed as ETC which is shown in the dotted line. ETC stands for estimate to 
complete and that gives us the formula estimate at completion equals to actual cost plus etc after the project has been assessed for its performance at any given point of time it has to check whether it will be able to achieve the bac or not if it cannot then it has to forecast the eac now the eac could be more than the bac or it could be less than the bac also depending on how the project has been doing the two ways to forecast the eac one is the manual eac and other one is the calculated eac in manual eac the ac is added to the bottom up etc and that forms our scenario number 1 as well ac to the bottom up etc we call it bottom up etc because project manager and team take a deep dive at the wbs level to reestimate each and every component to come up with the bottom up estimation considering the learning curve and other ground realities calculated eac is considered different risk scenarios and the assumptions and then these eacs are compared with the manual eac to find the difference and for any codes correction in some cases project may rely on the calculated eacs but the most preferred method is the manual eac because project management is a human activity it cannot be run based on the formulas alone calculated eacs have four scenarios scenario number 2 3 4 and 5 in scenario number 2 the project manager realizes that at this point whatever the cost overrun has been for the remaining work also the same overrun will continue with the same rate meaning the cpi will stand at 0.6 only in that case the eac is calculated uh, by dividing the bac to the cpi and this is simple mathematic for cpi of 1 we plant the bac at the 12000 dollars meaning this blue line where we assume that both cpi and spi will be 1 and in that case we will be able to achieve the bac of 12000 dollars but that didn't happen the cpi fell down to 0.6 so the bac is divided by cpi 12000 dollars divided by 0.6 and that comes out to be $20,000 for this scenario. In scenario number 3, project manager understands that this cost overrun has been because of uh, some issues. Those issues have been now addressed and for the remaining work, the project can continue with the budgeted cost. But the reality is that the earn value is only $4,800, meaning project has only built the road of 8 km. remaining 12 km road has still to be built in that case the difference of bac and ev will be taken and be added to the ac to come up with the eac and that's what this formula is representing ac plus bac minus ev and the value comes out to be 15200 dollars in scenario number 4 the project manager realizes that after this point there will be some cost overrun for the remaining work and that may be or may not be with a rate of 0.6 so in that case the formula would be this one and uh, this component will be divided by the cpi in our example we have divided by 0.6 the eac value comes out to be $20000 here which is exactly the same as we seen in the Uh, scenario number two, but as I said, CPI could be any different for the remaining work. It could be point uh, three or it could be one point two. Then the EAC would be having a different value altogether. Scenario number five is a variation of scenario number four, again derived from scenario number three only. Here. the project want to consider the impact of the schedule also alongside the cpi in that case the spi is multiplied to the cpi and this component is divided by both of them and the value for eac comes out to be $15000 now again there is some variation available in this formula itself wherein 
the project manager provides some weightages to CPI and to SPI. Say CPI at 80% and SPI at 20%, other way around or 50-50%. In that case, EAC will be yielding a altogether different value. So that's all about some forecasting methods which I try to explain with a simple example and the graph for that. Hope this gives you a lot of information to prepare for EVM questions. More you practice, better you are placed. Let me know your questions and feedback. Stay tuned.